Welcome everyone, thank you for joining. My name's Stephanie and I work for Forest Kindergarten in the City of Edinburgh Council. In this presentation, I'll be sharing information about Forest Kindergarten, which is a relatively new service, and the continuing journey of our provision. I'll start by sharing information about Forest Kindergarten and hopefully give you a picture of what our service looks like. I'll then share the first steps we have taken in evaluating and improving our service. Our initial evaluation led us to taking a closer look at what continuous provision looks like in our setting and how we ensure our learners receive equitable access to quality experiences and learning opportunities across the curriculum as they might in a traditional setting. I'll then share what our potential next steps are and finally we'll have time to answer questions. Forest Kindergarten is a unique service and it is often hard for our colleagues in traditional settings to picture what exactly our service looks like. In this section, I hope to give you an idea of how Forest started, how we've evolved and share what it is we do. If you scan the QR code here, you'll see a sway with further information about Forest Kindergarten. Forest Kindergarten began as a way to increase capacity for early years provision as we began to implement the 1140 hours. Forest Kindergarten began with a pilot program in the autumn of 2016 at Hermitage of the Braids. After the success of this pilot, our first Forest Kindergarten opened in 2017 at Lauriston Castle. Lauriston Forest Kindergarten offered a blended model with children from one nursery attending in the morning at Forest and nursery in the afternoon and children from a second nursery doing the opposite. In 2018, a second site at Camo Estate opened with the same model. 2019 brought Benali Forest Kindergarten with two groups of children from one nursery splitting their days between forest and nursery. In August 2020, we returned from the pandemic and had to reevaluate what our blended model looked like so that nursery bubbles weren't mixing. Our blended sites began offering a two full days at forest and a two full days at nursery model. Our Lauriston site piloted a four day forest model with children attending only forest kindergarten as the early years provision. In 2021 and 2022, we opened several new sites and now have 10 sites across the city with half doing a two day blend and half offering four day fully outdoor provision. Our ethos at Forest is to promote and support the holistic development of the whole child. By being in nature, children have time, space and opportunity to develop different aspects of themselves. We promote the opportunity to learn different skills, including children leading their learning and sharing. We provide a safe and supportive environment where children develop through play and are supported to recognise and manage risks. Time and space, play, nature and nurture, wayfaring and storytelling are key aims for us at Forest. We provide time and space for rich child-led, open-ended, uninterrupted play where children can explore, take risks and problem solve in a safe and supportive environment. Provide an environment that promotes an awareness of the changing seasons and a connection to the natural world to build positive relationships and opportunities which promote children and adults to form a sense of community. Provide an environment that builds resilience, confidence and self-awareness. Opportunities to move freely with and within nature to explore through all of the senses. Forest is a fully outdoor setting with minimal access to indoor spaces, which you'll see on the next slide. Our team set up and pack away all of our resources daily so that at the end of the session, you'd barely know that we'd been there. While we do have small indoor spaces that can be used to provide warmth and comfort when necessary, we spend the majority of our time outdoors. We create a forest home or base in the woods that has hand washing, toilets, a snack and lunch space, cozy reading space, hammocks and other resources. We go on adventures to different natural spaces on our site to explore natural materials, landscapes and different types of play.
Five of our sites have access to repurposed shipping containers, which we call cabins. The cabins offer the opportunity for a small group of children to have a cosy space. We don't use these spaces with our full group at once. The children know that they can ask to use the cabin space if they would like to. Two of our sites have yurts with wood burning stoves and two have access to gate or steward's houses on the estates that they use. As you've seen, Forest has grown quickly as a service and we currently have half of our sites offering four day Forest Kindergarten as the children's only early years provision. With this new model, it's become increasingly important that we engage in self-evaluation and improvement to ensure our children receive high quality provision and opportunities that are equitable with traditional settings. In 2021, we began our first forest standards and quality improvement plan. All of our sites had a shared priority of looking at our planning and observation systems and making these consistent across the service. We had input from two early years teachers to streamline our, streamline our planning and observation process and balancing intentional and responsive planning. Each site then chose two priorities specific to their site and communities. Both the sites in Craig Miller chose outdoor learning with one focusing on literacy and the other on maths and numeracy. They also both chose to focus on parental engagement as coming out of the pandemic, we felt it was important to reconnect with our families in creative ways. When we evaluated our literacy and numeracy provision, we quickly realized that some of the evaluation tools used by traditional settings were difficult to translate to a fully outdoor environment. We had to be creative and pick and choose questions across multiple toolkits. As we added in different resources and discussed our improvements, the team became interested in exploring what our unique access to the natural environment offered for literacy and mass and numeracy development. This led us on to our year two priorities. In our second year of our SQIP, the Forest Kindergarten as a service chose to look at inclusion, equity and equality. We wanted to make sure that we were really capturing all of our children's cultural holidays and celebrations and um, making sure we had multicultural and multilingual resources available for all of our children, that we were engaging our families in a way that was appropriate for them and that worked for them as well. Um, the two sites in Craig Miller chose to continue with parental engagement, trying to get back to engaging families in the setting now that the pandemic restrictions are lifted restrictions were lifted and also thinking about really sharing the learning that comes from nature and the experiences that children are having in our forest environment. They also chose to continue looking at outdoor learning but really focusing in on the natural element that's a predominant part of our service. We wanted to think about our the continuous provision in our service what does that look like compared to a traditional setting? Um, and then we've created a Padlet that explores how the children engage with nature and the learning that comes through interacting with our environment. And then reviewing the self-evaluation toolkits for traditional nursery environments. So if you recall, I said that when we were doing literacy and numeracy, we found that the traditional self-evaluation toolkits weren't always translatable to our service. So then thinking about what is the learning outcomes of this area? So if a traditional setting has a block corner, what is the potential learning outcomes of block play? And if we're not providing a block corner, how do our children practice and achieve these same learning outcomes in our environment? So as we began to explore nature and our environment's seasonal offerings and linking these to potential learning outcomes, that question of continuous provision really started to take shape. What is continuous provision in an outdoor pack away setting? How do we evaluate and ensure that we're providing high quality provision and best practice if we don't know what continuous provision looks like? What does continuous provision look like in a fully outdoor pack away setting? How can we evaluate our continuous provision and are there any gaps that we need to intentionally plan for? When exploring this question, we had to look at 
What resources do we provide as a setting consistently? What are our constructed spaces? Evaluating what resources we have naturally occurring on our sites across the seasons and what are the potentials for, for learning, development and curriculum coverage in these resources. Looking at our experiences, spaces and interactions over the year, what is the benefit to the children and how do they engage with these? Every day when we arrive on site, we set up our forest home or base. In this space, we have hand washing, toilets, snack and lunch spaces, a cozy area with books and art, a mark making area. Other areas that we construct include a master numeracy space, a role play area, a mud kitchen, a toolkit area, and a fire area. These spaces are not necessarily set up every day, but are set up based on the children's interests, the weather, and our planned experiences. Over time, the children begin to know what resources are available to them and will ask for resources if they've not been provided that day. We have a variety of natural spaces that we use both in our forest home and when we go on adventure walks to different parts of our site. The children come up with different names for spaces that they like to visit, such as the Sunny Path, the Broccoli Tree, Portobello Hill and the Troll Forest. Some spaces are great for tree climbing, others are big fields which are used for group games and windy days. We also recognise that across a year we have different resources, conkers, acorns, pine cones, flowers, berries, wild leeks, snow, ice, wind and rain. Each of these natural resources brings its own potential for learning and development. With such a breadth of spaces and resources, how do we track and evaluate learning opportunities? This year, we started a Padlet where team members across all of our sites can share the ways in which children engage with nature, the learning that they observe and possible lines of development. When we started the Padlet, we began simply with a column for each season. As it has grown, we're thinking it would be beneficial to change it so that there's a column for different resources, for example, a column for snow and ice and a column for leaves. That way we can really dig into what is the potential of that one resource, what learning might be there and what areas of the curriculum might it support. Here is, is an example from the Padlet of an observation by a team member of how a group of children explored a particular item they found in the forest. One of our children found a beech nut as they were coming into forest and they were really keen to share it with their friends and the adults in the group. Once they'd done that, all of the other children wanted to find beech nuts and they discovered that they littered the ground in a section of our forest home. One child wanted to see what was inside the beech nut and really problem solved looking for tools to try and open it in different ways that might happen. Another child discovered open beech nuts and began collecting the seeds. And another child was fascinated by the different colours and they lined them up based on the colours from lightest to darkest. Through this one resource, all the children took different directions in exploring it and all learned different things. In this way, we begin to see the potential of this resource for learning, development and meaningful curriculum coverage. It's not just about ticking boxes of the curriculum, it's about what can the children really learn and achieve over time in the forest by revisiting learning about revisiting it in different resources, revisit it in the same resource. Example of children taking one resource and exploring it in completely different ways is just before Christmas we had um, snow and ice on site and we had probably two weeks where it was just white ground and the children were really revisiting and becoming creative in how they explored snow. Some children were really interested in sledging and building snowmen and really active things. Other children were really keen on the details. So in these pictures here, on the left side, you can see that the children have made sort of a floor plan of a house. And I mean, the, the detail, they had a bathtub and a toilet and they had 
a toaster where they were putting toast in to role play and you can see the little one in the in the top um he has an ice remote and he's sitting on the settee changing the channels on the telly and then another child was fascinated by finding footprints in the snow and making footprints in the snow and he'd seen these little bird footprints and i'd you know we'd spoken about what do you think could have made those and just really exploring that sense of wonder and um, he was really pulling from his own prior learning experiences and he thought that stick man really made that footprint and there was different size footprints so he thought that they would belong to the stick family and he wanted to follow all the footprints to see if he could find stick man and he was sharing with his friends and getting them and it started with him following these footprints the little bird markings around the ground and then it ended up with probably six children following behind him looking for those um, bird footprints and then a few days later when we were exploring a different space in our woodland and they'd found um, patches of ice he found adult footprints that obviously had happened when it was a bit sludgy and then it had iced over and he was linking that back to when he found stick man's footprints so things like that when we add them into our padlet if we had a, a column that was just for snow and ice then we could look at all the different ways children explored the snow and ice and also the extension and the revisiting and how not only did we get the breadth of the curriculum in the snow and ice but actually we really got that depth that we're looking for and revisiting coming back to these experiences sharing these experiences with our friends looking at them in the floor book a couple months later and thinking about how much fun it was and what we want to do next and if we can find footprints in the mud and linking that to a completely different resource here is another example from the padlet where the team brainstormed the potential learning of leaves in the autumn we looked at different potential uses of leaves and what areas of the curriculum could be supported and observed through engaging with this resource this was done at the beginning of our autumn term before we had children on site during our in-service day as we added to the padlet we found ways that the children engage with the autumn leaves that we hadn't even considered so this can then grow and become a bigger infographic of including what the children did with the leaves as we gather all of these observations and evidence of learning across the year more questions and tasks begin to emerge in this section, we'll look at the potential next steps in this project. So looking at our Padlet and different observations, looking at our learning journals and floor books, we begin to review the information collected over the year and map our curriculum coverage. As we map it out, we can see, are there any gaps? Um, what, what's needed to fill these gaps? Are they things that we need to provide and intentionally plan for? Are they just things the children weren't interested in, but there's the potential to cover them? Um, and then thinking about, are the findings from this year consistent across different cohorts of children? And are they consistent across all of our sites? Each site has different access to various resources. Some have running water, others don't. So is there, are all of our children getting access to the same learning even though they don't have access to all of the same resources and how do we share this learning with our stakeholders how do we ensure that parents and families and carers are aware of the learning that's happening how do we ensure that we can talk passionately and knowledgeably about the learning that happens through nature and then looking at creating an environmental and continuous provision self-assessment toolkit for outdoor learning spaces. So thinking back to when we were looking at literacy and numeracy toolkits, there wasn't one that really fit our setting. We had to chop and change different ones. So then is there a way that we can create an environmental toolkit of what best practice might look like for our settings to use in the future? So I've started uh, kicking around some ideas of how we might go about 
our next steps and thinking about reviewing the information that we collected across this year and beginning to map our curriculum coverage um, I started to plug in some of the information from the Padlet and from our planning and learning journals um, into this this graph so thinking about just our natural affordances so what do trees provide us we have a wide variety of flora on site so we can do foraging and nature crafts and things like that and what areas of the curriculum we might cover or children might engage with um, is putting it in here and then also thinking about our developmental milestones and and links for those and covering um, and then I've also started thinking about in our seasonal long-term planning what kind of curriculum links and milestone links with that so these are just um, sort of very short sketches they're not filled in um, because it's just an extra part of the process and then thinking about how we could share learning with our stakeholders um, this is sort of a digital floor book that um, I made last year to share, you know, when we were still in restrictions with the pandemic and how we could share learning with families. Um, and it just breaks apart sort of the stages of building a fire forest and what the children learned and the children's voice, um, almost like a social story, really. And then I had a printed version for the children to reflect back on that went into their actual floor book and the digital version got uploaded to their learning journal so that parents could access that. We also use Sways a lot to do that. So um, I was thinking this type of thing could be adapted to share with parents and stakeholders the the learning that's happening through some of our different natural resources. So creating one, for example, about snow and ice and the different learning that the children had this year just using snow and ice um, as a very specific resource. And that's me. Thank you so much, everybody, for taking the time this evening to come and listen to me speak. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer those.